Hi, my name is Joe. I'm a technician here at New Life Scientific. We're in the ULT freezer room here, and we're looking at the Thermo TSX ULT. This is, I believe, their newest line of ULT freezers. This one's actually 2018, um, and it has V-Drive, which we'll talk about in a minute. It's pretty cool. Um, this one's finishing testing, and it'll be ready. It'll be up to sell pretty soon. And we also have a lot of other um, thermo freezers, the UX, a lot of the UXF line that's still touchscreen. It's just like one generation older than this one. Um, let's dive into the V-Drive. It's something that really excites me. And I don't get excited easily. So what makes this freezer unique from other ULTs, the common ones out there, even, you know, even the older, the, anything before this from Thermo, is this has, for each stage of the refrigeration system for both compressors, it has essentially what is a variable speed drive. They call it an inverter. Um, and these let the, uh, let it controls the speed of the compressor. So it lets you vary the speed from, let's say, 2,000 RPMs up to, let's say, 4,400 RPMs, depending on the demands that you need, you know, based on uh, room temperature and how many times you've opened the door and all that. It, it varies the speed of the compressor to increase or decrease the output for the situation. Um, normally, on normal ULTs, you just have the two compressors like you see here, but they're just on or off. There's no speed control. And that doesn't really let you uh, optimize your energy efficiency and your performance. You kind of have to make compromises to both. You know, you, when you, if you get more energy efficiency, you end up losing some of that cooling power. And if you go towards the cooling power side of it, you lose some of the energy efficiency. This kind of lets you have the best of both worlds. So this takes um, 240 volt roughly input from over here in the relay enclosure. And as single phase 240, it comes in, you know, the normal 60 hertz, and it outputs uh, through around 300 volts between 33 and 76 hertz. That's what actually controls the speed, the difference in frequency. So 33 hertz is slower, up to 76 hertz is the fastest. And by, by varying the frequency of the power going to the compressor, they can actually speed up or slow down the compressor. So it comes in one phase and it goes out three phase to the compressor. And like I said, based on the frequency, they can either speed up the compressor or slow it down. Um, one cool thing for these is, let's say you're opening the door or you're putting new samples in and you're putting a huge heat load on the freezer, it can actually ramp up the speed of, of both compressors significantly and really give you some serious cooling power um, to get you back to temperature fast. But also when your door is closed, you're not messing with it, um, the samples have been in there for a while, um, it'll, it'll run really slow, as slow as possible while keeping it cool. So you can, you can, the energy consumption when it's running on low power is really impressive. I, I hooked an amp clamp up to it and I believe at the, I'm not sure if it was the slowest or the lowest energy um, setting for the compressors, but it was pulling about, seemed like half as much energy as normal for these types of freezers during that low power um, mode, essentially. Um, so that's a huge deal. Also, I believe that um, one of the reasons why they can go, go with smaller compressors, because normally these are sig pretty significantly bigger on the other freezers, is they have so much control with the speed. So instead of having to have a bigger compressor that always runs at 2,500 RPMs, for, for example, they can use a smaller compressor that can run at 4,400 RPMs and produce the same cooling effect. So you can actually get smaller compressors um, in here. Also, they use uh, on this model and a lot of their newer models, they use propane for the first stage and they use um, propane and a mix of ethane for the second stage. So it uses essentially what they call natural refrigerants or naturally occurring gases. Um, so they're not actually synthesizing something. Um, so you can actually, when you're servicing these, you can vent, let's say the propane, I know for sure, you can vent that to the atmosphere. You don't have to recover it. Whereas with other refrigerants, you actually have to recover it. Um, so that's a pretty cool thing too. Um, everything else is pretty similar. 
Um, you see here, our, uh, we redid the insulation. A lot of the insulation that it came with looked pretty much like this. We just left this on because this isn't even insulation. Just, it just covers something. It's not actually insulating. So this is our insulating job. So we took what was this and we put on um, a layer of tape and adhesive to really give it a, a much more robust insulation. A lot of times the freezers will come in with the insulation falling apart because it just wasn't done well at the factory. Um, we've had some come in that were only like four years old and they already had insulation falling apart and that causes premature failure because of corrosion and because of wasted heat, or not wasted heat, but wasted cooling power essentially. So when you, the insulation comes off these lines, it absorbs heat from the air around and the, it makes the compressors work harder to keep the temperatures down and it also takes away from some of the compressor cooling because when the refrigerant returns to the compressor, it still, it actually cools the compressor. So when you're, when you're, the return refrigerant's getting warmer because you don't have insulation on it, then you're not actually being able to cool your compressor like you would. So it shortens the life of the compressors and it, it hurts energy efficiency. And it can also cause corrosion issues where you start getting holes in lines and stuff. So we beefed up the insulation. Um, it should be pretty rock solid now and last a long time. But yeah, so everything else is really similar with these freezers. As far as the refrigeration goes, there's hardly any differences between the others except for the type of refrigerant they're using. And I think because they're using the other refrigerant, you use much less of it. So let's say they may use 12 ounces of 508B, which is what they normally use for ultra low temperatures. Um, in this one, the ethane that they're using for ultra low, they're only using, I believe, like three or four ounces. So you use substantially less refrigerant too than you do with those, more, oh, those conventional refrigerants that we've used in the past. And I just wanted to show you just a couple things over here too. Here's the condenser. A lot of the other models of thermo, it usually actually sticks out a little bit, but on this one, they actually made it flush. And here is something that you don't often see either in the uh, other um, ULTs, especially thermo. So this, this is really standard for thermo. This is their relay enclosure. It has your, um, kind of like your logic board up here, dealing with temperature sensors and all that kind of stuff. I also believe that some of the um, firmware and stuff's in, installed in here and stored here and also works with the user interface up here, up on the, on the freezer. This is kind of like your power board. Um, it's kind of, it's a, it's your high voltage um, for your compressors and fans and all that kind of stuff. It's more of just a power board. Um, I believe this is your, um, it's your power, it's like your DC power supply essentially. So this is what changes your 120 volt AC or 240 volt, whatever you have to 12 or 24 volts for whatever the uh, boards need. Um, yeah, so this, this transformer is the first time I've seen this on a ULT freezer and or on a thermo too. It's, it's um, to give you the 240 volts that you need to work with the variable speed drives. So it comes in at 120 or 110, comes in here, turns into 240, and goes out over there. Usually with Thermo does a 240 freezer, they just have a 240 right into the wall. Whereas with this, I believe they actually need a transformer to get a one wire 240 over to the, um, to the variable speed drives. Whereas normally they have a two wire 240. So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. I really wanted to show you guys those V drives. Um, they're pretty cool. Um, so yeah, this is gonna probably go up for sale in a week or so. Um, but we also have, like I said, we have lots of other um, thermo freezers with touchscreen, so they're newer, I think 2000 and newer. So they have a lot of the bells and whistles that this one has. So check it out. Hope you enjoyed it.